tour through some of the more amazing cases in the files and adventures of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now, the Donovan case is in the demonologist. Yes, it is. Yeah. Is there anything that's not in the demonologist that is important? Yes, there is a photograph of levitation uh, on slide film. There's, in other words, there's slides of levitation. And then there were many events, John, which simply couldn't be put into a chapter on a case uh, that occurred later, things that happened to us. For instance, uh, the night that we left there, and uh, the temp, this was long after the house was exercised, and little things would happen from time to time. And when we went home, all of a sudden the thermostat, we find it up at 90, the, the place would be sweltering, and Mrs. Donovan would have to turn it down. Then we'd go out to get into our new car, which was a Chevette, we had bought a new Chevette, and, uh, the doors were locked, of course, when you're in the car, you lock the doors. I see the aerial broke right off of the car. We get in, and the signal light... The aerial that was broke off was inside of our car, yeah. inside of our On the seat. car. And the uh, signal switch was broke off. The wires in the car, the uh, spark plug wires and everything, had all been braided. And of course, we had a problem that night with that. We weren't, yes, we definitely had a problem. And, uh, and uh, the mechanics who looked at it said that it couldn't happen, but it did happen. The mechanics that looked at it in South, I guess that, you know, that's Woodbury, where we had left that car. And the mechanics that looked at it looked at us and shook their heads and said, How did that happen? Well, we, we don't know. Invisible how vandals. Yeah. No. We have no idea how it happened, but they, they, the wires underneath the hood were braided. And now, photos of levitation? Yes. In the yeah, demonologist's book, there's photos of a lamp levitating, and a Coke and a bottle. Coke yes. bottle. Are there any other photos you have other than those? The chair, the, uh, the bar stool. Oh, the, yeah, the bar stool, the, the chair in the back. Yes. The bottles that followed me up the stairs. Yes, the bottles. The detergent bottles, and the name was phone and I came up when I was almost hit by a bottle downstairs. Mm -hmm. And she, she seen them come and follow me up the stairs. Mm -hmm. Turned around, and the tops and screws spilled out right on the stairs. At that, okay. uh, we have physical evidence that the dress that was torn in half, oh, yeah. which De uh, Debbie had, uh, the young girl had just ironed, placed it on the back of her door, and started in the kitchen. It was ripped right in half. They could heard the rip and went and found it. Uh, what the else? Frame, we sunny bit burned. Oh, we, the have, we have the photographs burned. that were of the uh, family that just started burning. We have the doilies that would start to smolder. Flames would break out and shoot across the room. So we have all that physical mm -hmm. evidence. Are there any uh, airports um, in that case? Yes, there were many apples in that case. Stones um, fell on the house. The, the um, uh, tool chest, which was really inherited, inherited tool chest, and those real old, mm -hmm. heavy ones. A heavy one that one man was trying hard to pick up. It's found up in the top of the attic, and there's a little trap door. Exactly. And there's no way one man could get it up. It was so heavy. And that was found in there. And uh, then what was found yeah. in the locked freezer? I mean, oh, that's what I said. Something was found. That's what my records. The freezer was locked and things were found things in there. Things were found in there. Mm -hmm. I had walked mm -hmm. down the hallway to talk, to address Ed, who was in the master bedroom with the family. And seconds later, when I turned to walk back, I fell over a huge extension ladder. That was now in the hallway. Okay. Are there apports that we have, like stones? I have stones. Yes. I have the. Um, that were on the radiators, it, it has a type of a, a plug. Uh, plug. And these would unscrew and fall to the floor. 
the plumber would fix it and go to fix the other radiator, and it's, it would happen when he just fixed. I have one of those. Family pictures? Yeah. Yes. That burned, broke, and smashed. Okay. Um, another case, which uh, we may cover at greater length later, is the Goodens case. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's save that Goodens case and everything for later. Maurice Theriol which I covered, as you told me the story, and took notes on that case. We have uh, a video of Maurice being exercised by Bishop McKenna. How much of the exorcism is on video? Well, most of it. Most of all of it. Um, most of all of it. Yeah, all of it. Yeah. The exorcism didn't take that long, actually, of preparing for it. Okay, so in that complete video, does it show the wound that opens in his forehead and then gradually yes. happening? Yes. No. You'll see okay. it. I, okay, we have the video. You'll see the blood coming from You'll the eyes. You'll see the blood come from the eyes. You'll see the, the crosses that appeared on his body. Uh, you'll see... Now, in the video, is that on the video that you turn around and, and show them? Or is that in the photograph? No, that's no, on the video. video. Okay. That's definitely on video. And, um... You'll see the blood, it'll start like as clear coming out of his mouth. When it hits his shirt, it'll turn to blood. Then it'll come out all blood. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see the left side of the forehead open little. up. You'll see the eyes will take down a reptilian look. Mm -hmm. They don't blink. Um, For three and a half minutes, they don't blink. He doesn't blink. And then when his eyes roll up into his head, oh, yeah, yeah. that's when he comes out of it. But it was during that time, John, that I was having a heart attack and didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Because we had gone to a home earlier, the two-story house, where Bishop McKenna had performed another exorcism of a home. But this house was very bad. In fact, I just remembered something. Yes. We've got on film the girl being punched by an invisible force and knocked right off the yes. bed. Yes. So that we've got that, John. Uh, what case is this? That's, that's Malerba, Lorraine Malerba. That, <laughs> that made uh, national headlines. Oh, no, it sure did. And we well. never did nothing with the case. Well, but what had happened was, honey, that you had the heart attack. Yeah, oh, that's right. That's what we never did. And <laughs> then Chris <laughs> and right. Chris spent a lot of time with the family uh, following that. Ed's heart attack, in fact, he kind of almost kind of took over. But, God, Ed, you, you've got excellent We have police on. officers in there who witnessed all kinds of stuff. Now, in Maurice's case, case yes. we also have that 8 millimeter film. Yep, I've got it. You'd have to have that changed into a video. It shows him picking up the front end of a pickup truck while they change the wheel. He had extreme strength when he would call on spirits, but only when he called on spirits. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to do it. And then we have stills of him picking up a 450-pound cement statue mm -hmm. just with his fingertips. And we have a young fellow, six foot two, weighs about 200 pounds as a weightlifter, who couldn't even budge it off the ground. 450-pound statue? Cement statue of the Blessed Virgin, which he just picked up with his fingertips with no strain. Okay, that's in Satan's Harvest, I think. That's yep. Your that's Satan's Harvest. So we have a lot of good material on Maurice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Photos of that's across the back. In fact, I, I tell you, even to this day, his eyes are still bleeding. You know? mm -hmm. Okay. He would, he would consent to it. You know, you could here's a, here's get him to go to a medical doctor and film it right there, you know, if he would consent. Yeah, know. there's another very strange thing happening to him. I have not been witness to this, but I've had 
two people giving the evidence of it. And that is that um, the pairs change in color. And then what? what color do I? Change in color. Uh, first, I was contacted by the woman who owns the property. And she said, Mrs. Warren, I, I don't understand the strange and bizarre things that happen with this man. You should have. And uh, she said that I had stopped over to pick up Nancy, Morris's wife. She says, I was going to take her out. This was just before Christmas. And she says, I looked in it. I looked in the living room, and Maurice was sitting in there. And she said, I said to Nancy, oh my God, what did he do? Dye his hair black? And uh, but he hadn't. And now Nancy tells me it's happening a lot. Yes, it's, it's, it's expect anything. Anything, with this guy. anything. Anything. Now, anything we have lots of photos of Maurice were going on. Now, what individuals as witnesses witnessed this event? All right. We have, uh, d during the exorcism? Well, at any time, who witnessed Boyer. strange oh, phenomena? Oh, Father Boyer? Uh, Father, uh, Bishop Harrington, which I don't think I've No. Um, Bishop McKenna, I don't know about him either. He, uh, I'm not going to put Bishop McKenna's name down because I don't think I should. He's a deep priest. Although they witness it, they're very much involved in it. You know, when it comes, it becomes very terrible. Yeah, it's like uh, investigators and uh, All right, now, a lot of things. We have uh, Chris McKenna. We have Larry Elwood. Let me just get their names. I know I've, I have their names also like this. Larry Elwood. Yes. Uh, Roger Coyle. How does he spell that name? C O Y L E. Uh, Al Vogel. B O G H L. Marcel. And that other kid, uh, uh, Peter. Peter. What was Vogel's don't name? Don't ask me the spelling of Peter's last name. I'll have to get it for you written out. Because Vogel, who's he? No, what was his, his name? Was name Paul Vogel? No, uh, no uh, Al. Al, Al, Al Vogel. Vogel. Uh, let me see who else. Do and I these have? are your examiners, your assistants. Yeah, they yeah, stay right at the house. They stay right there. Oh, right. and Linda? Linda Fidelli. Your detective. Linda Fidelli. Linda Fidelli is detective? Yes. Yeah. F-I-D-E-L-E. No, what police department? No, what police Now, um, the, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll give you some idea of it. And the one that would really be the witness would be that Henry Luca. Yes, Henry Luca also, who was a childhood friend of Maurice's. He would be an excellent witness. Um, were there any psychiatrists? Yes. Yeah. Um, there was Worcester State Hospital involved. Okay. And who at Worcester State was involved? Nurses, the nurse counselors, psychiatric counselors. We met with uh, we met with a whole team of them uh, during this period of time. I'll never forget. And the spokesperson for the group came in the room and he looked at us and he said, one thing I'll say about this guy, he is not psychotic. Because that is the category many times the possessed would be put into was mm -hmm. exhibiting psychotic behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's what he said to us. One thing I've got to say, this guy is not psychotic. Okay. And that was a pretty broad statement. Everybody liked him. Oh, everybody liked him. I mean, if you could believe that these college guys would go there on their free time, giving up their social party, giving up their social life, they would go there and stay with him and help him and work in the fields and plant the, the seedlings. That is what they would do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now, do we have a, a record of the 
personnel's names at Worcester State Hospital in case we'd like to interview them and get their testimonies on. I, I don't think, I, I could get that. I, I don't think that would be a problem. Yeah, that in your records? I think I would have that in my records. I don't think that is a problem. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have the police involved, Roger, Belly. Yeah. If you have Worcester State Hospital people, they're also very credible. Yeah. Your yeah. assistants. Yeah. Yeah. The Warren Police Department, too. Oh, yes, and... You have the state trooper, too. The state trooper that were, if in fact, it was through the state trooper's involvement that the state, that the case went public. Now, do you remember his name? He's a black guy. He's the only black state trooper up there. Oh, well, you met him. I didn't meet him. I don't know. Oh, you didn't meet him, huh? I thought you met him. You know? No, that's cheap. Uh, there was one... A bluff there, so I'm There was one very strange thing that happened where Ed was confirmed. Now, Ed, you know, kids about not being psychic and not having psychic insight, but Ed does believe in the divine intervention. He does believe that you know, uh, spirits, angelic spirits can influence his life. This one Saturday, he says to me, I've got to go up to a Maurice's. And um, so I said, oh, I said, Ed, I said, you're, you're very tired. I said, you mean to be very, very, very tired. So you just kept on it. And it, I said, it. I don't think you should go, man. I said, call Chris. And I can remember he said to me, Chris has been there for two nights, all night. Most likely, these guys are sleeping, you know. But something tells me to go up there this morning. He said, he'll probably be there tonight. But I, I have to go up. He got up there. He know he's in the truck. He you know he's in the truck. Yeah. Maybe he's in the car. In the car, I'm sorry. And, and uh, Nancy had a car. Nancy told me they had a big argument. He told me that he was going to hang himself in the roof he because he was getting so distressed. No help was coming. Uh, he wanted to get rid of this thing, whatever it was, and he thought the only way he could do that was to commit suicide. Hmm. Now that's hmm. not the morning when I met with Ruff, right? Now Sean Le no. LeBluff is Sean the, Le that was funny, that's the morning I went up with uh, Ed will never um, get The sun is coming out from the east, and it's shining on the farmhouse, right? And I thought, oh, man. It was a very, very early in the morning. I was with this other kid, the weightlifter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, Danny, I said, um, I must have been like maybe uh, a good thousand yards from the uh, house. And I stopped the car. I said, I'm going to get a shot of the farmhouse from here with the sun shining on it. All of a sudden, I seen two figures from out of the house. I could make out a police car. All of a sudden I could see all this brass shining in the sun and everything. I thought, holy shit, who's this? I thought it must be a general uh, attack or something. And when I came up, this, this big police chief was standing there, he gave me the fish eye, you know. And uh, he said to me uh, something like, uh, who are you or something? I said, uh, Chief, uh, you know who I am. I said, uh, I've been coming up here. I said, you're the Chief of Police of Warren. You must know who I am. He never laughed, you know. I like to fool around. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts giving me a fish eye talking to me very soon. I said, hey, wait, Chief, hold on a second. I said, you're going to take that attitude. I said, you and I are going to get no place. I said, look, let your hair down. Come on inside, we'll have a cup of coffee. And I'll explain exactly what's happening. He looks at me. Okay, we go in. He sits down at the, at the table and he's looking at me. I said, Chief, I said, lay your hair down, will you? I said, you know, I deal with you guys all the time. I said, what you're going to hear now is outrageous. It's fantastic. It's out of this world. I said, but it's all true. I started to talk to him. Then all of a sudden, he takes off his hat, you know, and he goes like this. He's listening to me. He gets real friendly then. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm Ed for him, you know? I never had the pleasure. You said, would, I, would you mind if I came back here some night? I said, no, I don't mind. That's 
I said, you can stay with our investigators or with us anytime you want. But that's when he, he became friendly with me then. Now that was Sean LeBlanc. Sean LeBlanc. His whole four uh, men police department didn't like him. Nope, he just didn't say he was a Catholic priest. Oh, they liked him. Nope, he wasn't a light man in the Um. Did he see some any of yeah, the material? Oh, yeah. Did he think he witnessed on this TV in, series? In, well, in, step what about he the gave in, his uh, statements in the book. And what about mm -hmm. the incident, Ed, in the bathroom when they yeah, got there and the blood was coming out yeah. of him? And, and, uh, yeah, I showed you photographs, John. Do you remember the photographs? He read all that in a manuscript and he confirmed it. So. Remember the photograph that I showed you where? Maurice was lying on the floor in the bathroom. That was taken by the police. We took that picture, you know, with the blood from out of his mouth. Okay, I suppose he died.